The kingdom is in grave danger once again, and there is no one left to deal with the unhallowed threat. The crown has been forced to enlist the swords of the coin mercenary guild to gather champions from outside the realm. The task of hunting down the acolytes and stopping the unhallowed scourge falls upon the shoulders of four ruthless mercenaries. While each has a unique set of skills, they must band together to vanquish this evil before the unhallowed consume the world in darkness. Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Set a Watch, Swords of the Coin. This is the expansion. It's a standalone game that you can combine with the original game, Set a Watch. It is a dice placement puzzle game. I feel like it works really well solo to two players. I'm excited to show it to you. If you want to see how the original game plays, Mike did a playthrough way back when that's super good. I'll put a link in the description below. You can find that. Here what we're going to do is play the expansion using Expansion Heroes, and I'm going to go against the Outriders uh, using the Outriders expansion enemies because, well, I just want to die apparently. <laughs> I actually haven't played against them. Uh, I'm excited to try it here, but likely we're going to lose because I have heard these are a good challenge. Now in this game, no matter the player count between one to four players, you always have to play with four heroes. So that's what we're going to do for our solo game. So let's go ahead and set up the game and then jump into our playthrough. The first part of setup is choosing which heroes you want to play with. I'm going to play with the monk, the artificer, the barbarian, and the bounty hunter. Each hero is set up a little bit differently, so we'll go through them quickly one at a time. We'll start with setting up the Bounty Hunter Hero. So this Bounty Hunter Hero has a trophy limit of 3. What that means is when the Bounty Hunter contributes to defeating a creature in line with direct attacks, and direct attacks means you place one of your dice that you've rolled, put it on the creature as uh, direct damage, and help defeat it, we can have the Bounty Hunter take that creature card as a trophy and set it next to their board instead of placing it in the graveyard. And our Bounty Hunter can hold up to 3 trophies. The Bounty Hunter will roll D8s, and you can tell that by the symbol in the top right-hand corner of their player sheet. So I've grabbed the three D8s. In this one, they are blue. We also have the five ability cards for our Bounty Hunter. I'm going to randomly shuffle these up and place three out on the board. The third one that I place out, I'm going to flip over to the exhausted side to show that essentially we're starting the game with every character having a point of damage. It gives a reason for one of the heroes to go to camp because when they do that, they automatically get to refresh an ability. So it was kind of a detriment if you don't do that. Uh, you don't want to go to camp, but someone has to stay at camp each turn. So that way we'll have two that are face up ready to go and one face down. The three abilities our Bounty Hunter has is Exploit, Track Them Down, and Trophy Swap. Now the other two I'll still keep off to the side because we could potentially do an equip action to equip them throughout the game. We'll go through these abilities in detail throughout the playthrough uh, for the Bounty Hunter and for each of our heroes, but what's important to know is during each round we can activate these one time by placing a die on it, and we can always also, so you can do this just on its own, or you can do this even when there's a die on it, you can exhaust it to use the ability on that specific ability card, but then that is considered another point of damage. If ever you have all three of these uh, being damaged, that means that you either need to go to camp, or if you don't go to camp, uh, when you are on watch, you don't get to contribute your dice or any of your abilities to the combat against the horde. When the Bounty Hunter does choose to stay at camp, which by the way, each hero is going to have to do that two times throughout the game, so there's a total of eight initial rounds before the final ninth round that we have to just survive to win the game. During those eight rounds, you get to choose which one of your heroes is going to stay at camp, and each one has to stay two times. One of those, or when that's happening, you can actually use your Collect Bounty ability, placing a die here and activating this. This says you can discard up to three of your trophies to the graveyard, then collect coins equal to the total damage of the just discarded trophies. So what's new in this game is there's actually a merchant, and you can buy items, which is really fun. I'm really glad they added it. It added a lot to the game, I think. Here we have the Barbarian. Now, she's awesome. She rolls 3d12s. That means she can potentially do a lot of direct damage. 
However, her abilities, which by the way, she has Leap and Voracious Active with Bloodied, uh, Exhausted, the abilities cannot be used by spending dice. You have to exhaust the, ability, the abilities when you use them. So it means that when she does this leap action, she can only do that one time, and then we flip it over and it's exhausted, and she'll have to go back to camp or find a different way to heal in order to get those back. But it does mean that then generally she'll be using her dice here for more direct combat or other types of abilities. Her special ability when she has to stay at camp is the Primal Hunt or Primal Might. Choose one of your exhausted ability cards and resolve an equip action with it, which means you can swap it with one of the other ones that's not equipped. And then you get to refresh that just equipped ability. So basically she can heal two times when she goes to camp, which is really nice. But of course, she has to spend a die to, uh, there to do that. Here we have the Monk. Now the Monk rolls D6s. He's going to be the yellow D6s because the Artificer also rolls D6s. He has Blind Fighter and Flying Kick active with the Chai attack exhausted. Oh, and I just want you to understand that these are all randomly chosen. I just randomly chose them. Uh, his ability, if he goes to uh, the camp, and you know, remember you have to do that twice for each game, he can upgrade a single die twice or two of your dice once. He can actually upgrade his dice from D6s to D6s. D8s to potentially D10s. So we could get some better dice if he chooses to meditate while he's at the camp. Finally, we have the Artificer, and the Artificer has an Artificer staff. They can never lose this, and this starts with eight charges. And it actually has a passive ability on it that states once per round you may defeat a revealed creature in line with health equal to or lower than the charges that you have here. So we have eight. Then you lose half of your charges rounded up. He has Quick Craft and War Staff available with Siphon Vortex Exhausted. Also rolls those D6s. And he has a Craft Item ability. Draw a number of cards from the item deck equal to the value of the die spent. So if I spent a die of four, I'd get to draw four cards. Keep one item and return the rest to the top of the item deck in the order of your, of your choosing. And I do want to mention the max amount of items that you can have is two. This is not counted for the Artificer, so you can have two other items outside of the Artificer. There's one more item I want to mention about the heroes before we move on to our next part of setup, and that is the type of attacks that they have. So the monk and the barbarian are melee characters. They can only do direct attacks. Now anything with their abilities, it's going to depend upon what the ability says. But with any of their direct attacks, so just placing a die on an enemy for that damage, they can only do that to the first position enemy. The Artificer and the Bounty Hunter can actually do that with the first and the second position because they're ranged. Now let's set up our enemy creatures. First thing you'll want to do is grab all the Unhallowed that you want to use in the game, or potentially use. I'm going to randomly grab one of these, and I'm going to place it into the Horde. And the Horde is inside the box itself, which is really cool. In that final round, any enemies that are in the horde, we're going to have to place them at the end of the line of enemies, and we have to defeat all those enemies in order to win the game. So already we have for sure one unhallowed at the end of the game. Now we might be able to get rid of this depending upon the actions that we do in the game, but uh, we don't know, <laughs> and we have no idea which unhallowed that is. I've then chosen seven other unhallowed enemies, and I'm going to have them in a stack face up on the side of the board. They very likely are going to come into, the pl into play, maybe not all of them, but summon cards will bring them out, put them into our line of enemies, and then we will be seeing them, unfortunately, over and over again. Next, you'll want to determine the difficulty that you want for the game. I'm going to go on normal, which means I'm going to choose two summon cards. If you wanted easy, you'd only choose one. If you wanted insane, you'd choose four. Let's only do uh, two. That's a normal game. This is how those unhallowed cards that we saw that we placed the side, those seven, these are how they can come out into play. We also need to grab two Acolytes. Now I've chosen, because I'm doing the Outriders ones, I've chosen one of the Undead Acolyte and one of the Goblin Acolyte. I've set them aside. Then I have randomly drawn 28 cards from that Outrider deck. I think there's 34 of them, so it's almost all of them. Just a few are still in the box. And with that pile of 28 enemy cards, I'm also going to shuffle in the Acolytes. That should mean I have exactly 30 creatures here. What I'm then going to do is split the deck, 15 cards and 15 cards, I'll do that better <laughs> when I'm not on camera, and shuffle in one of these cards, so these are the summon cards, into each one. They just don't want you to have both of them show up at one time, so that way you have them seated between the 30 cards. Once you've completed that, you should have a creature deck having 32 cards in total, and we'll set this off to the side. 
Now we can set up our map deck. So the first thing you want to do is grab your final map card. This is card number nine. There's two options in this game. I'm going to use the Tower Ruins. We'll place that at the bottom of the stack. Then what you need to do is make sure you remove all the respite or the easier locations. I think of them as the easier or more relaxing locations. They have this symbol on them. Uh, out of the map deck. So I have all those out of here. I'm then going to take this stack, shuffle it up, and randomly draw eight and place eight of them on top of this final location card. This is now considered our map deck. Let's put that out on the board. We'll place that deck here. It should have nine cards in total. And then to start the game, we'll flip the top one over. We can ignore the amount of wood that we lose, which is amazing because that was minus four here. Uh, and then this is going to tell us how many creatures are going to come out for this round, which is only six. We also have an ability that says when this location enters play, the adventurers as a group discard three coins from the camp board. That was the best card to flip over because I have no money <laughs> right now. So that would have been terrible mid game. But at the beginning, that's actually a really nice start. Now we still have that stack of unused regular map cards as well as the nicer map cards. What I'm now going to do is shuffle those nicer ones in to the remaining unused locations, hoping that if I ever do a check map action, I can maybe find one of those respite locations and replace one of the bad ones that we're uh, very likely going to see. So I'll shuffle these up and then place them in the box. There's a nice little spot inside the box for our unused locations. The board in this game is actually the top of the box, which is kind of cool and sometimes a little bit annoying because this thing keeps popping up. <laughs> uh, but for the beginning of the game, you want to set your fire at seven, which means that you will be able to reveal the first two enemies. You can see them. If ever this goes below seven, we can only look at the first one, the one that's as close to us as possible. Conversely, if we get all the way up to, let's say, 12, we can look at the, the first three because we have more fire uh, that's in our campfire. And I love how that works. And that's a very cool way of doing that. New with this expansion are all the coins. There are coin spots and you can see that there are coins on the board. We're supposed to place out coins on each of these locations. So if I go here to heal, we'll as a group collect those coins that are in those spaces. Each round, we're going to be placing more coins out on the board for any spaces that have a coin symbol and you don't have a die there. Finally, we can set up the merchant board. So we have all of these different items. I'm going to reveal the top three. These items we could potentially use during the game. Looks like we've got two scrolls and a firewood. So these two are discard abilities, so you can use them once, discard them, and they're done. Actually, this is also a discard. There are ones that may be activate abilities where you'll use dice for them, or there might be passive ones, or there could be ones where you exhaust them to use them, and then you'll get them back when you go to camp and rest. Uh, each, this one says uh, the bolster scroll, each adventurer may choose to reroll any number of their unspent dice. Whoa. This one, remove the top card of the horde from the game. <laughs> That could get rid of that uh, that unhollowed. That would be amazing, actually, right now. And firewood, that would give us plus two fire, can be discarded in camp uh, or on watch. Cool. I did also get this play mat that will hold the different creatures. So as you can see, we'll be placing them out on the table like this and pretend that our fire is over here. So if we could reveal the top two creatures, we'd or the first two creatures, it would be these two that we would reveal. As we defeat them, then this slides down. And our goal is, is to defeat all the creatures that are out here. And we have to do that eight times, then deal with the final round where none of us are at camp. We potentially have that horde though that we have to deal with. And as long as we defeat all the enemies, we'll while no one has, uh, all of us haven't gone exhausted while on watch, then we win the game. On the back of the hero sheets, they have a really nice quick reference. We'll go through this for our first round, and then after that, we won't use it. We'll just keep moving through the phases. So we can see our first phase, we need to roll our dice. And we all do this simultaneously. So I'm going to grab all, that, all those dice and roll them up together. We'll give our 12 dice a roll. That feels so good to roll them. I've set up our dice on our hero boards just so you can see what they are. You can see the monk here, 644, the artificer, 632, not nearly as good. The barbarian, a 12 and a 10, and the bounty hunter has an 8 and two fours. Now, remember, the numbers on the dice only really matter when you're using them for direct damage, which is just placing them out and dealing damage based upon the number that's on the die. Remember, you can activate your abilities with any numbered die, but sometimes some abilities are better with higher numbered dice or better with lower ones. That's part of the fun of the game. 
We'll now move to the camp phase. We have to pick who rests in camp. The resting player refreshes a card and then can take all the different camp actions. Chopping wood, scouting ahead, checking the map, healing, equipping, potential runes if they rolled doubles. As much as I don't want to do this because I feel like the monk actually has a pretty good role here, I want to upgrade his dice as soon as possible. So I'm going to choose the monk to rest. The first thing you need to do when you choose to rest is take one of these tokens. These are rest tokens. There's a one and a two on here. This is denoting that uh, the monk now has done one time at the camp. He can only do it one more time through the rest of the game. This means we can refresh our chai attack. So now we have all three of our skills available to us. Now what we can do is place these three dice anywhere within camp or use our ability here. And you know, I'm gonna do the meditate. I can upgrade a single die two times. So I can go from a D6 to a D10, or I can upgrade two dice once. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna upgrade both of these D6s. So now we have two D8s that are fours that we can use thanks to that meditation. Now let's talk quick about the different locations you can go to in camp. So if you have a, an exactly a six, can't be higher than a six or lower, it has to be a six, you can come here and heal and that can refresh another one of your abilities. Of course, we don't need to do that because we're fully healed. Also, any coins that are in a space, when you place a die there, you gain all of them for the group. So as rounds go by, we might gain up three, four or five coins here. If I went there, I'd collect all five, which is cool. Equip allows us to swap out abilities that we don't have currently equipped. However, if I swap out an exhausted ability, the new one comes in exhausted. Just don't forget that. The check map action, you need to use a four plus, so four or higher, you can go here. You can uh, draw the top card of the map deck and the top card of the unused location deck. Choose one to place on top of the map deck and the other one goes to the bottom of the location deck. You could choose to go to scout ahead. Now the first die you place here can be any die that you want, but if you decide to scout ahead multiple times in one camp round, the next die you place has to be larger than the one you place there and then so on and so forth. As you can see the greater than symbols. Scout ahead lets you draw and look at the top two cards of the creature deck. For each card, you can either return it at the top or the bottom of the creature deck. You kind of know what's coming. Finally, you can come here and chop firewood. You can use any dice. You can go there up to three times. Every time you go there, you'd increase the fire limit by two. If you happen to roll doubles or triples, you can go to the rune slots that are on the back of the location cards. Uh, you can go to one of each of these spaces and there's three of them. One is a seal. Uh, you can remove one unhollowed from the graveyard and place it at the bottom of the unhollowed deck. You can get them out of there. You can vanquish, remove the top card of the horde deck, <laughs> horde, the horde deck from the game, which right now we know is an unhollowed. Bolster, all adventurers on watch may choose to reroll any number of their dice. Uh, I have two fours, and as much as I want money, I feel like it's too good to be true to not use the two fours. So I definitely think I want to do the vanquish. So I'll place one of the fours here, and then I will do the other one as a bolster to allow my friends to re-roll. I believe that's that one. Vanquish means that that unhollowed we had in the horde is no longer there. I'm going to remove it from the game. For the re-rolls, I definitely think the artificer will re-roll these two, the barbarian, I think we might re-roll this one. We'll see if we can get lucky and we'll re-roll the two fours. Now, this means these three are on watch. And if ever all three of these have all three of their ability cards exhausted, we automatically lose the game. Even though the monk is all ready to go, since he's at camp, he doesn't count when you look to see if you uh, have lost the game. We're hoping for some higher dice and we got a two and a five, a one and a two. That's terrible. We did get a nine though here. That completes the camp phase. We'll now move to the merchant phase. We can purchase items from the market. You know how much money we have? Zero. So that's not going to happen. We're going to refresh the market with new items and then add a coin on each camp action space that is marked with a coin symbol and does not have a die, which is all of them. If we had purchased one of these cards, all we would do now is just replace those empty spots. But since we haven't bought any, what we do is we reveal another item. So we have the Divine Bracers. It's a passive. Each time a, the first player power is triggered, reroll one of your spent dice and add it to your... Wow, wow, wow. Add it to the pool of unspent dice. I think we're going to place that here. So what you do is you actually place it on top of other items. Now I only have these three items available, but if I buy these Divine Bracers, the one below it will become available. And now it might be hard to tell on camera, but I now have two coins in each of these spots, which is great for the next person that goes to camp. They can actually get some money. 
Now we're going to move to the watch phase. So we're going to prepare the creature line and reveal creatures based upon our campfire level, which is two. Then as a party, we can choose the order that we spend our dice as direct attacks or activating abilities, or maybe an exhaust an ability to use its effect, if, especially if you're the barbarian. If the firelight ever goes to zero, someone has to exhaust an ability card that is on watch to then increase the fire by two. So you always have to have the fire at least by two. After we have done all the actions that we can, and if there's any creatures that are out on the table still that we haven't defeated, they're all going to deal damage to the uh, uh, adventurers that are on watch and then go into the horde and we're going to have to deal with them uh, in that final round. And then we'll go ahead and reveal the next location and start over. We have to do that eight times. The ninth time, no one's going to be in at camp, assuming we get there. And we're going to all try and defend against whatever enemies come out. We can see here from our location, we need to place six creatures out on the board. We have our six creatures. Remember, our fire level is at two. So let's reveal the first two enemies and see what we can do. Our first creature will be a Forgotten Sentinel. It has an ongoing ability. This tells you its health. It's only four, actually. If we don't defeat it, it's going to deal us two damage at the end of the round. It says here, the Forgotten Sentinel's health is increased by this location creature's count, which is six. So the health here is actually 10 instead of six. Okay, that's not terrible. Our second one here is another Forgotten Sentinel. Well, go figure. So this one actually only has a three plus six is nine. So we have a nine health Forgotten Sentinel and a 10 health Forgotten Sentinel. And don't forget any of the uh, characters or heroes that have ranged attacks can actually attack this one. Uh, but the melee characters like that Barbarian can only attack the Forgotten Sentinel. The first thing we're going to do is have our Barbarian use the nine die here to deal nine direct damage to the Forgotten Sentinel. Then that uh, bounty hunter will deal one damage, just enough to take him out. That's the six plus the four is 10. This is gone. And since the bounty hunter used direct damage to take out that forgotten sentinel, we can take him as one of the trophies. And that is what we're going to do. So we have a golem trophy. We now have first position open. So that means the forgotten sentinel will move up to first position, moving all other creatures up one. We'll then reveal the next enemy. Oh no. This is a wyvern hatchling. It says reveal minus one fire. That means we'll move our fire down to six, which means now we're not gonna flip over the wyvern hatchling, we've already seen it, but any new ones that go into position two, we're not gonna flip over until they move to position one. And if you look here, we do not want him in position one. If this enemy gets into the first position, it will steal one unspent die from any one adventure. Gross, you blasted dragon. I had a plan to get rid of this using our bounty hunter, but I think I've got to deal with the wyvern hatchling first. I think it's as good as time as any to have our artificer use his staff. Once per round, you may defeat a revealed creature in line with health equal to or lower than your current level of charge. Our charge is eight. We're going to defeat this wyvern hatchling. Okay. Uh, that means though, we have to lose half of our charges rounded up. So we are going to have to lose four charges. So we're down to four. Now we're going to slide all those creatures down. But remember our fire is too low. We don't get to see what this enemy is. I might have a quick fix though. I'm going to use our quick craft by the artificer. This is why I love the artificer. Once per round, you may spend charges equal to the cost of an item that's in the market to gain it. At the end of the round, shuffle it back into the item deck if able. So we're going to spend two, two charges going from four down to two, and we're going to buy an item. We're going to quickly find some firewood, and then we're going to discard that and chuck it onto the fire so that we can increase our fire by two. That'll push us back up from six to eight, and now we can reveal two enemies again. Why I wanted to increase my fire is so that if I do take out this Forgotten Sentinel, I don't want to have a nasty uh, first line or first position effect. Instead, I have a Goblin Archer. Okay, so first thing, it has a keyword Beast Rider. That means if in either adjacent spots, when enemies are revealed, if one of them is a force creature, it's immediately going to jump on it and essentially ride it, which is really cool. It makes one enemy that then essentially you add the health of the two enemies together, as well as their attack together, and they become one enemy that's harder to defeat. 
Also, this one has a second position ability, and it says stun an ability. Stunning means that we have to place a die on one of our ability cards and not use its effect. We have to place or use that for any one of our characters, and it has to be an ability that you can activate with the die. So that means the barbarian actually cannot be stunned. You can never stun the barbarian, but you can't choose the barbarian for this. You have to choose someone that can be stunned. I think we're just going to stun the Artificer. We're going to place the two on the War Staff, not activating the ability. Our Bounty Hunter then is going to use the Exploit ability that he has. We're going to defeat a revealed creature in the line who has a type that matches one of our trophy types. Well, we have a Golem that's in a trophy, so we just took out this Golem. No problem, didn't matter what its health was. It has now been defeated and will be placed into the graveyard. We only have three cards left. We're actually doing quite well. Uh, let's flip this one up. Oh, we have a river troll. This guy needs 11 damage to take him out. However, for each fire that we spend, because we essentially throw fired logs at him, <laughs> reduce his health by two, especially because he's a river, uh, river troll. That's really cool. He is not a, a forest creature, so we don't have to worry about the goblin archer jumping onto him. We're then going to have the Artificer just use five direct damage here and take out that Goblin Archer. He only has four health, so he's gone. He'll be placed into the discard pile. We'll slide these down. We'll reveal this one. We have an Acolyte. So this has a first position ability. It says move Goblin Acolyte to the end of the line. When it's at the end of the line, which it is, draw the top card of the Unhollowed deck and place it behind the Goblin Acolyte. Limit once per watch phase. So that's great. He just happened to be at the end of the line, and that means that we now have our first unhollowed <laughs> at the end of the line, and that's our Revenant here. And he says, for his defeated ability, place the Revenant on top of the creature deck. Yes, we have to deal with him over and over and over again. Boy, this is just getting more and more fun, isn't it? The Artificer is most certainly going to do a direct damage attack. Remember, he's ranged, so he can attack at plus one range, taking out that Goblin Acolyte, so that way we don't have the first position effect happen. He would jump back to the end of the line, so let's get rid of him. He's in the discard pile. We'll then use our Barbarian. The Barbarian and River Troll will go head-to-head, -head. and yeah, she's pretty awesome. A 12 <laughs> takes out that River Troll. Nobody's business. All we have left is the Revenant. And I think we all know what we're going to do with that Revenant. We've got a 10 left from the Barbarian, 8 from our awesome Bounty Hunter, and that is fantastic because we just dealt 18 damage. And instead of this going in the discard pile, which would then mean it would go back on top of the creature deck, I believe he can take this as a trophy. Let me know if that's not right, but I believe that he can because when he deals direct damage and defeats an enemy, he can actually take it as a trophy instead of having its defeated effect. I think it's safe to say we sent those creatures packing. <laughs> so uh, end round, don't have to worry about exhausting any abilities. We'll then just reveal the next location and start the next round. So I've grabbed all of our dice back. Let's see what our next location will be. We'll move from the demolished caravan to, that's another minus four, hidden pass. This is seven enemies. The adventurer in camp may take the check map action without spending a die. Yeah, why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> now, I'm assuming with that ability, though, you don't get the coins because you have to place a die there to get coins. But we can at least do the check map for free. Minus four fire is totally brutal. One, two, three, four. We're down to four. That means I'm likely going to have to spend two dice just to get our firewood yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else I'm going to do because I, you got to have two enemies revealed if possible. On to round two. Let's roll up our dice. I see another 12 for our barbarian. Gosh, she is awesome. Looking at the dice that we have for a round two, I was really wanting the artificer to rest because I don't have a great way right now of being able to increase our charges here except for our exhausted ability. Uh, but a 6-6 six, six, and a 5 is really hard to pass up on. But if I did rest or didn't rest with the Artificer, the only other one I'd really want to rest with is the Bounty Hunter. And he's got a 5-5 five, five, and a 7, which is pretty much just as good. So I think even though it's not amazing, I am going to have the Artificer rest. Let's place our rest token here for the Artificer. And then we're first going to do with a 6. Draw a number of cards from the item deck equal to the value of the die spent, which we have a six here, to activate this ability. So we're going to get to look at six items. We get to keep one item and return the rest to the top of the item deck in the order of our choosing. This is kind of insane. What are we going to do? 
We have our crossbow. You gain plus one range. We have Helm of Prophecy. Cancel a creature's reveal power that was just triggered. That's an exhaust, so we could get it. Oh, man, we could get that back. We could use it at least two times in the game. We have Activate for the ring. Choose an ability card with a die spent on it equal to the die spent on this item. Resolve that ability a second time. Illusionary Shield. Take the creature in the first position of the line and move it to the horde or prevent an, uh, an exhaust from a summon card. Oh, wow. That's cool. Uh, because every summon card makes one of the characters on watch have to exhaust an ability. So you can actually stop that with the illusionary shield. We have shocking hammer. Deal to the creature in the first position damage equal to the maximum value of the die spent to activate this item. Boy, if we had the barbarian have that, that would be 12 damage. Uh, then we have the dragon tooth spear. Defeat the creature in second position. <laughs> So many great options here. I think I think this is just too good. We're going to go for the Dragon Spear, but I love this one. So I'm going to put this one on top, followed by this one, followed by this one. Oh, I should have them the other way. So this one on top, followed by this one uh, after that, and then this one, and then this one. Oh, yeah, so this one at the end, then this one, then this one, then these two. You guys are probably watching this going, why was that so hard for you, Colin? <laughs> but that's how our items are going to be set up. Our next two actions are going to be to chop wood. We will do that and gain two coins. Oh, I do want to mention these are double-sided with threes on the other side, so make sure that you uh, don't accidentally flip them over. That will gain us two wood. We'll then place a five here to gain two more wood. Thank goodness. And then we do get that free check map action. What that means is I get to look at the top card of this one and the top card of this one and then compare them and choose which one I want to put on the top of this deck and the other one will go to the bottom of the unused locations. We either have the Forsaken Asylum, which is minus three to our fire. I don't love that. At the end of the watch phase, each adventurer gains one coin for each of their unspent dice. Hmm. Or the Moving Force, it's only minus one. Adventurers in camp cannot resolve the chop wood action. Oh but it's only minus one. Hmm. Should we take our chance? And it's only six enemies. Let's take our chance. We're going to do uh, the moving forest. Hopefully we find a different way to get fire firewood. We're going to place this one then at the bottom of this deck. We've completed the camp phase. We'll now move to the merchant phase. We have two whopping gold, three and four. We can't buy either. So we'll just replenish with, hey, the illusionary shield for five. We then replenish our money. We've got threes across the board. Remember, since there's a die here, we don't place out more money. The next time, because the next round, we're not going to be able to go and chop firewood. We'll be able to place a coin there. Now we're going to draw seven creatures from the creature deck and start doing our watch phase. I did almost forget we need to refresh our siphon vortex because we went to camp and we can refresh one of our abilities. We have our seven creatures out on the board. Let's start revealing our first two. The first one that we have, we have the Mesmerist, ongoing. Adventures cannot spend tamed creatures on direct attacks while Mesmerist is in the line, and Mesmerist cannot be tamed. We don't have tamed abilities, so that's fine. Uh, that's a human. Our next one, we have another Acolyte. This is second position, which he's in sometimes. Add the top card from uh, tap card of the graveyard to the horde. Well, the top card of the graveyard is that river troll. That's going to be placed into the horde. That's what we're going to fight at the end of the game. So we have placed that in there. If it gets to the first position, we have to shuffle the graveyard. And I should say, search the graveyard for the topmost summon card. Shuffle that card back into the creature deck. Well, the nice thing is we don't have any in there. But likely, the summon card is probably in this set of seven. So I might want to take him out before he gets to first position. I think starting with our monk is a great idea. We're going to activate our blind fighter. We can peek at two creatures in the line, then recover one of your spent dice and set it to its maximum value. So we're going to recover this die and make it an eight instead of a four. And then we will be able to look at two creatures in the line, peek at them. They won't be revealed, but we can at least see what they are. 
I do also want to mention that although we have this card here and you would think, well, why don't I just do this over and over again? I can only ever activate one of my abilities, or I should say I can only activate each ability that I have one time with a die and one time by exhausting it each turn. So I can't now take this five, use this, recover this for a six to activate it a second time. I can only ever do that one time per round. I definitely want to peek at the next two cards. So we have a Goblin Archer, which is next. That's not terrible. And we have an Evil Apparition. Uh, neither of those... Well, this one has a second position ability, right? It stuns an ability... Or, uh, yeah. I don't think there's going to be anything we can do about that, though, because it, when it gets into second position, it's going to activate. So we'll just have to deal with the stun. What it does mean is that our Bounty Hunter can use his 7 here to take out the Mesmerist, and this can be his third trophy. And now we have a Human, an Unhallowed, and a Golem, which is nice. Now this Acolyte here, now that it's in first position, we look for a Summon card, but we don't have any. We are, though, going to have to deal with the Goblin Archer and stun an ability. I don't love it, but we're going to stun the Bounty Hunter, I think. Our Bounty Hunter is the only ranged character that we have out this time, so he can use his final five to take out this goblin archer that will go into the discard pile he's got three trophies he doesn't want anymore but he's used all three of his dice we do know the next card is an evil apparition it's another undead it cannot be defeated with a single die uh, for direct attack and it has a seven we're going to do a chi attack with our monk using our five here. Choose a revealed creature in line. Deal damage to that creature equal to the total of your unspent dice. We have two eights, so that's 16 damage. That is more than enough to take out that undead acolyte. We only have four cards left in our row. We have to reveal this one. I'm waiting for that summon. Oh, we have another beast rider, another goblin. First position, it's going to stun an ability, not second position. So I definitely want to take that out before the evil apparition. I don't love this, but I think I'm going to use an 8 here, using our flying kick for our monk. Choose a revealed creature in line, deal to that creature damage equal to the total of your spent dice. 8 plus 5, well that's definitely more than the 5 that we need for that boar rider. But then we don't have to worry about stunning uh, another ability. Three creatures remaining. Our next one is another evil apparition. Apparently our bounty hunter should have taken out some of the undead characters as trophies. That would have been nice. I think we're going to do leap. Exhaust his ability to defeat one creature in line, then gain plus one range until the end of the round. Well, the plus one range, whatever. But we're going to take out that second one, the evil apparition. Not that it really matters. We're going to take him out with that, place him in our discard pile. I just feel like this has to be a summon. It is <laughs> choose one adventure to immediately exhaust one of their ability cards, then discard this card to the graveyard and replace it with the top card of the unhallowed deck, which you know what that is. We now have the Crow Prime. This could be pretty terrible, but it's not bad this time. It says move the creature in the first position to the end of the line and conceal it so it flips itself over. And if it had a reveal effect, that would be terrible. But for us, it's actually not terrible. We're just going to flip these over. It's concealed, but then it immediately gets revealed. It doesn't have a reveal effect. It just has an ongoing. So we're good to go. But I do still need to have someone take that point of damage. We'll have the monk take that point of damage on his chi attack. It's only so good because it can only deal damage equal to two dice, not three. So yeah, the flying kick seems better. And then between the Barbarian and the Monk, as well as the Barbarian twice over on the Evil Apparition, we have so many dice. We don't have any left over, but that will take out both of these enemies, and we've cleared the second round. We'll then reveal that new location, and we know what it is. It's only a minus one, but the adventure at camp cannot resolve the chop wood action. We will lose one fire, but we're okay. We're still at two. We'll now move to round three. Let's roll up our dice. Uh, we don't have any 12s. Maybe this is a good time for our Barbarian to rest. We'll see. Looking at our dice rolls for this third round, without a doubt, the Barbarian is going to rest. That means she can immediately ready one of her abilities. I think we're going to do Bloodied just because it looks cool. Exhaust this ability to increase one of your dice to its maximum value for each of your exhausted abilities. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. I feel like I have to do Primal Might because it just seems awesome. Choose one of your exhausted ability cards and resolve and equip action with it. So I'm going to replace Leap, although I really like Leap. I have two other really good abilities here. 
Rampage says exhaust his ability, then take the first three cards in the line, shuffle them together, and randomly place one back in first position. Move the other two into the graveyard in the order of your choosing. Or we have Storm Stone's Throw. It's a passive. For each melee adventure on watch, including the Barbarian, you may resolve a single die direct attack with plus one range. So if I have just one melee character, then I can do one ranged attack. If I had two, which a lot of times I will with the Monk, I could actually do two ranged attacks with the Stone's Throw. Cool, but this one's way cooler. I like Rampage way better. And this might seem a little bit crazy, but I do think what I'm going to do is a check map and another equip action. That's also going to gain us six gold. We have six plus two, we have eight gold. I feel so incredibly powerful. Uh, but with the check map, let's draw this top location as well as the top location from the unspent pile and reveal them. We either have Kayla Springs Mine, which actually does not hurt our fire at all. Each adventure on watch may exhaust a card to destroy a revealed creature in the line. Each time a reveal power resolves a minus two uh, fire. Hmm. Uh, the other one is at the end of the of the watch phase, adventurers as a group must exhaust one additional ability card for each creature entering the horde. But it's only seven. Yeah, I feel like nine is a lot. <laughs> so we're going to deal with the Carnival of Fear. That means we're going to probably have to chop wood. But let's put the Carnival of Fear here, and we'll put this one at the bottom of the unused locations. For our equip action, I'm going to get rid of Voracious. We have not seen a lot of forest creatures or humans. I think we've seen one human. So I'm going to replace that with Leap. We'll now move to that merchant phase, and this just looks so good. Take the creature in the first position of the line and move it to the horde, or prevent an exhaust from a summon card. We know another summon card is coming, so we'll spend 3 plus 2, which is 5. We're going to buy this. Now, we can give this to anyone. I am going to give this to... The Artificer can make his own. We're not playing with the Barbarian, so let's do the Monk this time. We'll give the Illusionary Shield to the Monk, because that makes a lot of sense. I wish I had one more coin because I want to buy this. I think I'm just going to stay so that I can hopefully buy that next time. Or do we want this? No, we're not going to. That means we'll just replenish it with a new one. We know the Shocking Hammer's coming, and I want that one too. Oh my gosh, so many good ones. We've added coins to the board. We have four now for healing, four for the scout, and one for chop. These two don't get any. We need to place six creatures out in our line. We have our six creatures in line. Let's take a look at our top two. Our first one will be, we have an Acid Drake and it has a first position effect. We have minus two to our fire. That means we're not going to reveal this. Then each adventurer checks their pool for unspent dice. If they have at least two matching results, they must exhaust one ability. Two matching results. We have an 843, a 653, and an 862. Oh my gosh, we are so lucky that didn't happen, but minus two to our fire is terrible. We are going to chop wood like nobody's business next time. Blind Fighter seems too good not to start with. So we'll pop this up to an 8. We'll get it back and we get to peek at two creature cards. We're definitely going to peek at the next two. We have another Acid Drake. Are you serious? And we have a Trickster Imp. That has a reveal. Each adventurer on watch immediately exhausts one of their ability cards. Then each of them may refresh a different ability card. Oh, he's terrible. And that's a reveal. There's not much we're going to be able to do about that. Well, this isn't great, but I need to do this to power up my staff. I am going to Siphon Vortex. Defeat the creature in first position. Then move one unrevealed creature into first position and gain charges equal to the number of creatures currently in the line. This means we can defeat this Acid Drake. Let's put this card into the front of the line. We'll reveal it in a second, but that we will gain one, two, three, four, five charges plus the two that we have from before. So that will put us back up to seven from the two that we had. I will take that. We will, though, have to reveal this one. Oh, no, first position. Exhaust one ability, then move Living uh, Doll to the graveyard. So this will go right to the graveyard, uh, and we have to have someone exhaust one ability. Actually, this is kind of crazy, but I think I'm going to do the Artificer because he's the only one that does not have an exhausted ability. And we know that Trickster is coming. We're going to have to switch which one we have exhausted. So uh, before, he was actually just going to have to exhaust an ability and not be able to switch it to a different one. Now he will. So that actually wasn't as bad as I was thinking. However, what's going to happen next is going to be terrible because we're going to have minus two. Oh, no, this is actually really bad. 
we're going to lose two more fire, going from five down to three. And then each adventurer checks their pool for unspent dice. If they have at least two matching results, they must exhaust one. Well, we have two eights here. So we have to exhaust an ability for the monk. And that's because we used our blind fighter to turn it into an eight. We've already used the blind fighter, so we'll flip that one over. We still have our flying kick available. I think for our next action, we're going to use our bounty hunter. Track them down. Reveal up to two creatures. If either creature type matches one of your trophies, which is human, golem, or, unho golem or unhallowed, uh, then set your unspent, tr uh, unspent dice to their maximum value, which would be eight. We know this is that stupid Trixie Imp, so let's do these two. Our first one is the Dragon Rider, so if there's a dragon next to it, it would actually jump onto it. It has a reveal effect. Oh, why don't we just hit our fire a little bit more? Then reveal cards immediately before and behind the Dragon uh, Rider that's in line, but we were going to do that anyways. We'll reveal this one. Oh, it's just, you know, a river troll, but that's a giant. And this one over here is the Demon, the Trickster Imp, which we're also going to have to do in a second. Let's first deal with the fire. Our fire now goes down to a whopping two. Then we just have to deal with this reveal effect. Each adventure on watch immediately exhausts one of their ability cards. Then they may refresh a different one. Before I do that, I do want to mention one of the creatures that we revealed was a human. That would mean that both of our unspent dice are now going to move to an eight. Okay, and that's important because now I am going to exhaust this one for our bounty hunter to then ready the trophy swap. Our monk will have to flip over the flying kick, and then maybe we'll flip over... Ah, the, the blind fighter is just so helpful, so we'll do the blind fighter. The artificer will flip over the quick craft, and then exhaust the war staff. Let's have the bounty hunter and the monk work together to take out the acid drake. We're then going to discard one of the trophies. We're going to discard the golem, so we now have a dragon as one of our trophies for the bounty hunter. We can then just do direct attacks to take out the last three enemies, I believe. Uh, just taking out each one with what we have here. Eight for there, that's eight plus six, that's more than enough for the nine. Eight plus five is more than enough for the river troll. So all three of them are toast. Nothing goes into the horde, but we have no fire. And don't worry, remember what I picked? I picked the minus two. 2, 1 for fire. So 1, 2. When you go below 0, you get pushed back up to 2, and one player needs to exhaust an ability. Wonderful. At the end of the watch phase, adventures as a group must exhaust one additional ability card for each creature entering the horde. Hopefully that doesn't happen. We're only doing 7 this time. I don't love this option because it's forcing the monk to be the rester next time, but I think I'm going to exhaust the monk's ability just so that I can rest with him, power up his dice a little bit more, and uh, yeah, then hopefully he can survive. <laughs> hopefully everybody else will roll well. And of course, what do I roll? Two eights for the monk. Wonderful. Apparently it's no rest for the weary for the bounty hunter, uh, because we're already doing the second rest for the monk uh, when he only has, well, he hasn't rested yet, but he's still kicking. <laughs> Uh, I've heard that some people say you have to rest with everyone once before doing a second time. I don't believe that's true. I don't see it in the rules. I just think it's everyone has to rest a, ma a total of two times throughout the eight rounds. Our monk will have a pretty quick camp phase. He's going to go here, upgrading that D6 two times to a D10. So we'll have one D10 and two D8s. I really wish I could help him heal one more time, but I can't. I'm instead, because I rolled eights, I needed exactly a six. I'm going to use both eights to increase our firewood one two three four that still doesn't even put us up to where we have enough to reveal two cards oh it is what it is but we do have four gold that we can use we have two really fun options for our four gold we can do each time a first position power is triggered reroll one of your spent dice and add it to the uh, add it to your pool of unspent dice it's awesome but the shocking hammer is also great especially with the barbarian but this gives us more options uh, yeah, you know, we're going to do the shocking hammer just because I like how that works. We're going to give that to the barbarian, but that's all four of our gold. We've placed more gold out. We have five on heal and scout ahead, two on equip, and one on check map. We're now placing seven creatures out on the board. Seven creatures, three heroes, only one being revealed at a time. This is going to be interesting. 
I did almost forget to reveal a new item. We have our ring of repetition. We know what that does. We've seen it before. Let's see what that first creature is. Oh, it's just a yak. <laughs> okay, well, we have a five from our acolyte, or our acolyte. That would be our artificer. Let's just take out that yak, shall we? One down, six to go. We'll slide everything else down. Let's see, we have the uh, mesmerist. Once again, we cannot tame creatures. That's actually fine. We'll just use a seven from the bounty hunter. Gosh, I just feel like I'm just waiting for something bad to happen. <laughs> okay, sliding these all down again. We only have five. We've been able to one-shot the two characters. We've got another yak. Okay, let's use a four for that one from the artificer. because so we have a four. This is going well so far. Uh, we'll slide these down. So we only have four cards left. Let's see. We have a boar. That's only a four. These these are really wimpy characters or creatures. We'll do five from the bounty hunter to take out the boar. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Maybe this is okay. We'll flip our next one. Oh, there's our dragon rider. Reveal minus one fire. Then reveal the card immediately to the left to see if it's a dragon. It is a dragon, which also has a reveal. Uh, and so it's going to jump on to that dragon. So we have two minus ones to our fire. And then this is going to move to first position and steal one unspent die from one of our adventures. I have a one from our artificer. We'll just have that one lost. I'll put it on here. No, I'm not going to put it on there because it's not damaged. I'm just going to remove it from the game. We'll move back down to five. This actually worked out okay <laughs> so far. We'll slide this one back over. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yep, no, we got all of those. So we need to deal seven, and now I should just, uh, 14 damage to take this guy out. Well, I think this is legal. I don't see why it wouldn't be. We're going to exploit and defeat a revealed creature in the line whose type matches one of your trophy types. Well, I have a dragon and I have a human, so I believe I can just take out that wyvern hatchling with the dragon rider. Let me know if you don't agree with that. I know you can't tame them when they're combined, but I don't think there's anything saying I can't use exploit. Our final one is a boar. And look at this. We have an 11 and we have a 10 and we have a five. I, you know, I must've done a terrible job shuffling these cards or something. We had all the forest creatures show up at the end. This guy was a three. He was a wimp. We took him out. No problem. Really the only thing we're having a problem with right now is fire. <laughs> This means we can move right along to round five. We're going to go to the tall grass location. Each time a creature with a first position power is revealed, move that creature one space towards the first position. Ooh, well, that's okay. I can only see the first position anyways. Minus one to our fire. Well, I think it's safe to say we know who's not resting, and that would be the monk. What a roll for the barbarian. A 12, a one, and a two. <laughs> Well, looking here, that was actually some pretty terrible rolling, if you ask me. A 311, 522, 554, and 1221. I do think, though, we are going to have the bounty hunter do his first rest. That will mean he gets to refresh, track him down, which I do like. And we can discard up to three of our trophies to the graveyard, then collect coins equal to the total damage of the just discarded cards. We're going to discard all three. Two. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. You know what? I'm going to keep the unhollowed. We're just going to discard these two. I don't want that unhollowed in there. That's a total of three more coins. Of course, in order to do that, I need to spend a die, so I'll spend that four. Now, I'd love to do something other than chop firewood, but since we just can't seem to keep our fire going, and I do really like being able to see two creatures, one, two, three, four, although is it worth it? Is it worth it? Because if you think of what we just did... You know what? One, two. I'm just going to go down one. I'm going to chop two times. And then I think for the other five, let's go ahead and scout ahead. This is where this actually is kind of awesome. Normally, I wouldn't really do that, but that's five more gold and we can get a ton more items. Five plus that three is a lot of money. We get to look at the top two cards here and we can put them on the bottom or, or top. Search the graveyard for the topmost forest creature at the end of the line. That's not terrible. We'll keep that on top. And then this one is a summoned. Let's put that on the bottom. I wish I could just get rid of it. But that means, let's see, we're revealing six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we're still going to see it uh, regardless. So it doesn't even matter. The big thing that does matter, though, is we can buy two items. We have three, six, seven, eight bucks. Four plus three. That's exactly what I'm thinking of buying. 
each time a first position power is triggered, re-roll one of your spent dice and add it to your pool of unspent dice. I think I'm going to give that to... The Artificer can get items, so I think I'm going to give that to the Barbarian. So he's got the Divine Bracers. You know what? Actually, I'll do it to the Monk, because the Monk's got the D10 and two D8s. So let's do that one to the Monk. And then we're going to spend... So that was four. Then we're going to spend three, so we only have one buck left to get the Bolster Scroll. Each adventurer may choose to reroll any number of their unspent dice, because you saw how terrible our dice was. <laughs> It was terrible. Uh, so I'm going to give that to anybody. It doesn't matter because I'm just going to immediately discard it and use it right at the beginning of the uh, turn. So then we'll flip this one over and we know that's a cancel a creature's reveal power that just triggered. I did refresh all of our coins. We've got six here, three here, and two here. We're then going to be placing all six of our creature cards. And we know what that first card is going to be, the Forest Sprite. Search the graveyard for the top topmost forest creature, which actually is perfect. Our forest creature is that silly boar that had three health. I'm going to put it at the end of the row. That's no problem. We now can spend that bolster scroll. Let's reroll some dice. We'll reroll all three for the monk, these two for the artificer, and these two for the barbarian. We'll give them a roll. And that looks definitely better. An 11 and an 8, still a 2. A 2 and a 4 for the Artificer. A 5, 5, and a 6 for the Monk. Much better than a 1, 1, and a 3. We'll start off with that Blind Fighter using our D10 5 so that then we can get it back as a D10. Awesome. So we now have a 10, 5, and a 6. And we can peek at two creatures in line. I always like knowing what's coming next. We have a boar rider. Oh, if it becomes first position, it stuns an ability. And then this one, we have another forest sprite. Let's use our rampage, shall we? Exhaust this ability, then take the first three cards in line, shuffle them together, and randomly place one back in first position. Move the other two to the graveyard in, uh, in the choice of your choosing, in the order of your choosing. I really just don't want to stun an ability. So I'm hoping that the one that we pick is one of those forest sprites because we can deal with those forest creatures, no problem. Yeah, beautiful. So that forest sprite will cause another one of the forest creatures to come uh, to the uh, back of the line. I'm okay with that. These two, the fairy and the goblin, will go into the discard pile, which is sweet. The top forest creature is just a boar with four health. And with five health, we'll simply use a five here from the monk to take that one out. We'll place that into the discard pile, shuffle these up, and we have for our next one, I hate the tricksters, reveal. Each adventurer on watch immediately exhausts one of their ability cards, then they may refresh a different one. That's actually not terrible for the barbarian. I like this rampage slightly better than bloodied, so I'll swap those. I'll swap the quick craft with the war staff, because the war staff can at least deal a lot of damage. And we'll swap the flying kick with the blind fighter. That should be it. Now, I do also want to mention, I have these divine braces for our monk, but so far every time we've activated a first position ability, we've had all of our dice ready. We do now have one not ready. So if I do have another first position ability activate, I can use those divine bracers. This trickster imp needs 10 damage. What do you say we use that D10 that we have and take that out with the monk? Thanks, monk. Let's see our next one off first position. We have to exhaust one ability, then move the living doll to the graveyard. That was a first position ability. So our divine bracers lets us reroll in this D10. So we have a four, but now someone has to exhaust an ability. It makes sense that the barbarian wouldn't even see that living doll. Let's do rampage, especially because she has a way of healing them up. This living doll, though, will then go to the discard pile, and we'll flip over our last one. We knew what it was. It was a summons. So we're going to choose an adventurer to immediately exhaust one of their abilities, but we're not because we have that shield thanks to the monk. I'll have to exhaust that. But then we're going to discard this card and replace it with the top card of the unhallowed deck. The top card is the goblin hurler. If a goblin is immediately before or behind the goblin hurler in the line, defeat the goblin and exhaust one ability. <laughs> Because it chucks a goblin at you. That's really awesome. But no, that's just going to sit here. Uh, we've got a 12, 4, and a 3. This shouldn't be terrible. Unfortunately, because the monk has already rested twice, this will only be able to be used once. But we're using that to negate the um, having to exhaust one ability. 
This would technically ready the next time the monk rested. I seem to have more dice than I even know what to do with. <laughs> uh, we can definitely take out these guys with just the dice that we have. No problem whatsoever. Look at that. That's all of our dice that we used. Yeah, definitely dead. So gone. I don't know if I'm just rolling high or if these enemies aren't quite as difficult. I will say that that has now depleted our deck, so I'm just going to shuffle this up. We've got some more on Hollowed in here, and that's what we're going to use going forward. Let's reveal our next location. We have the Fog of Memory. This one is only hitting our fire by one. Let's just do that now so I don't forget. We're down to five. And this states, after adventurers roll dice, each adventurer must select one of their dice and set it to the number of locations in the location discard, if able. This is considered the list location discard. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's actually not bad. We have to place or change one of our dice to a six. That's not great for the barbarian, but that's great for everyone else. And hey, whoever goes there could rest. Oh, that's not bad. That fog of memory just means that we could collect six gold and have someone replenish two of their abilities. If only that could be the monk. <laughs> well, the artificer has a one, one, and a five. That's pretty terrible. Look at this, a 12. I would say that's a five. There we go. Well, this is kind of weird, but looking at what we have here, first thing we need to do is change one of our dice to a six, if able. So we will move that one to a six. This die can move to a six. Gosh, I've never had an ability be so gosh darn helpful to us. Usually those locations are not helpful. I mean, look at this. We have two threes and a two. Why did I change the three to a six? There we go. I changed the two to a six and we'll change this one here to a six. I think I am going to do the barbarian for resting because she can do that rest, get some gold. I like the three abilities that we have. So I'm just going to flip this one now and I'm going to flip this one because we're going to do one heal action for sure. For our three actions, we are definitely going to heal for one, gaining six gold. That puts us to seven. We're going to check the map, which gives us four more gold, which puts us up to 11, 11 gold. And then we are going to chop wood so we can reveal two cards. Maybe that's not a good thing. Uh, but it is what it is. Let's check out our locations. We finally have a respite location, Everlasting Flame. Look at that, plus one to our fire if we go there. Fire cannot be reduced. Yeah, that's what we need. Sunken Civilization is the other one. If no creatures enter the horde during this watch phase, adventurers as a group may draw one item at the end of the watch phase. It's actually not bad. We have to deal with nine enemies and it hits our fire by two. I'm sorry. We're doing Everlasting Flame because I want help with our fire. Moving to the Merchant phase, I think the only thing we're going to buy is that Helm of Prophecy. We're going to spend five, three, four, five bucks. And I think that's all we're going to do. We only have one enemy in the horde, and I don't really feel like it's worth getting rid of that, spending three gold. We're instead going to gain this, and let's give that to, let's give this to the Bounty Hunter. We'll then replenish with a new item, and we have our crossbow. That's our last one that we knew what it is. The next one that we reveal will be new. We now have four gold in the equip spot and one in the scout ahead spot. We'll then draw eight monsters to put in our line, and we get to reveal two of them. Eight is a full row. Are you ready for this? Let's see what we find. Let's reveal our first one, and we have our trickster imp again. So we're going to have to do our switching around of abilities. You know, our bounty hunter just got the Helm of Prophecy. Cancel a creature's reveal power that was just triggered. Yeah, let's do that. We won't get that back till we rest, but our bounty hunter has to rest one more time. So why the heck not? We'll then reveal our second card, and we have a Beast Rider. That's not a beast. Uh, if it's in first position, it would stun. We're not going to deal with that. We have our Artificer who can attack range. Six. We'll take him out. No problem. We'll then slide down our cards. We have a, a Mesmerist. That's not a problem. We're not taming any characters or creatures. I'm a little bit more concerned about my dice this time because I have eight creatures. So I am going to use my Artificer's Staff. We'll go down to uh, three because it has to go down, uh, rounded down. So seven divided by two rounded down means that we can just take out this Mesmerist no problem. Let's see what our next one is. Oh, it's just a Yak. That only has five health. Our Artificer has a five right here. He can take that out. It's ranged, no problem. Let's see what our next one is. Oh, we've got that Forgotten Sentinel. 
uh, this uh, the health of this creature is increased by this location's creature count, which is eight. So that is a twelve that we need. Who? I think we'll have the bounty hunter and the monk work together. Three plus a seven is a total of ten to take out the trickster imp. We'll then slide these down. Let's see what we have here. Just a boar. That should mean our bounty hunter can take that out no problem at range using a three. I do want to mention that he did take the demon as a trophy, and he'll take the forest creature might as well as a trophy since he did direct damage on both of them. We actually only have three cards left. We'll flip this one up. That's a first position one. We definitely don't want that in first position. What do you say we flying kick that living doll? So that's a six. Choose a revealed creature in line. Deal damage to that creature equal to the total of all of your spent dice. We have a six here plus a seven. That's more than enough to do the five that we need for the living doll. That's gone. Two enemies left. I'm feeling good about this. We have an acid drake. It's not in first position, but we need to take it out before it gets into first position. Can anybody say trophy swap <laughs> let's flip this it says choose one of your trophies then swap it with a creature in the line in the line negating its power then gain one coin so we're going to go to seven coins i am doing this without spending a die so i am going to exhaust it but i think it's worth it what do you say we put that boar there instead of the acid drake huh so the acid drake is now our trophy we then have two sixes for this forgotten sentinel, 6 plus 6 is 12, 8 plus 4 is 12. This one is toast. And then I kind of can't believe we have to do it this way, but we are. We're going to use our war staff, deal X damage to revealed creature where X is equal to the die value placed here, which is 1, plus the number of charges we have, which is 3. That's 4, just enough to take out that boar with 3 health. Well, we survived even without the Barbarian. That was every single die, though. <laughs> okay, we have our Everlasting Flame. We're going to gain one additional fire, and the fire cannot be reduced this round. Only six enemies. We are now at eight for our fire. We have our dice. Let's give them a roll. I see lots of ones, which is not good. And look at this. Four, two, three, two, three, five. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Before we keep going, I think I cheated on two different things. I did some editing. I think I should only have five coins instead of uh, seven coins. And my fire should be one less. There we go. Looking at our options for resting this time, I think I am going to choose the bounty hunter. That will be his second time resting. That means he will ready his trophy swap and ready the helm of uh, proficiency. Then let's go ahead and use our first die here to discard these two tro trophies to gain two more coins, or actually to say four more coins, two for each. We're definitely going to chop some wood. That will gain us two more. And remember, we cannot reduce this this round. And finally, we're going to gain three plus one, four more coins, and we're going to do an equip action. We're going to swap out the trophy swap card, and we're going to place this one out. We now have expertise. When resolving a direct attack, double the value of your dice against any creature type in your trophy collection, then discard that trophy. We have tons of money this time, so we're definitely going to buy this for four. We're going to buy this for three, plus get some change for that one. So we've got two ones and this one for the three here, so that's four. And what the heck, let's buy this one as well. We're going to buy all of these, uh, all of these cards. A crossbow with the monk sounds awesome. We're going to give this one to the artificer. And we're actually going to have the bounty hunter keep the ring of repetition. I do want to mention that the monk already had two items. So we're going to discard this one that's exhausted so he, because he can't use it. So he can have the crossbow of the elves. We still have a total of two coins left. We have a strength potion. We have an endurance potion. And we have a lucky charm. I've placed our coins out onto the table. Now let's draw six total creatures. We have our six creatures all set up. Let's look at our first two. Our first one to be revealed, we just have a boar. And our second one, we have the river troll. I think the first thing we're going to do, since the artificer is going to have to rest the next time, he's the only one that's left, he's going to use, this is an exhaust, defeat the creature in second position. We'll flip that over, and that just means this river troll is gone. Who doesn't want to just take out the river troll? 
The other thing we're going to do before I forget, which technically I should have done now uh, or before this. Well, yeah, I'm still going to do it. We are going to vanquish, remove the top card of the horde from the game. And that card is that other river troll. So that river troll is now removed from the game that was in our horde. So our horde is empty right now, which is wonderful. We'll then slide all of our creature cards down. Let's look at our next one. We just have a yak and a boar. These guys are wimpy. I've got a five from the monk. Remember, he's now ranged. Normally he's melee, but he's ranged. So we can take that one out, no problem. And then let's slide these down. Oh, we have a wyvern reveal. Guess what? We don't have to do that. Our fire cannot be reduced. Take that, you wyvern hatchling. Okay, we need six. We definitely do not want to have that in first position. We have a five here and a one from our artificer. That will take this wyvern hatchling out. Let's flip our next one. We have a beast rider, another first position. Good thing that is not in first position. Thank you, boar. Oh, I believe. So it's going to jump onto this boar. I'm going to say that when it does that, it is going to have its ability. Uh, because, yeah, it's going to jump onto that beast rider. Now that's a nine health beast. And then we flip over this one. Oh, we have a forest sprite. Search the graveyard for the topmost forest creature. And then put it behind it at the end of the line. That will be, of course, this yak. We'll put it right here. Let's go ahead and stun our siphon vortex. Our barbarian is going to use the two die that we have here, turn it into a 12, because <laughs> that's what that shocking hammer does, and that is going to take out these two no problem. And I'm realizing this is a first position ability, so this actually would not be the topmost beast. This one would be our boar. Uh, they're pretty much exactly the same. But that is a first position ability, which means we get to reroll one of the priest dice back in because of his bracers. So he now has a five and a two. So the five will take this one out. A five will take this one out. We still have more dice. Yeah, we annihilated those. We have one more round and then the final rounds. We have the Adventurer's Guild. We have eight monsters. Adventurers may spend a number of coins equal to a creature's damage to defeat the creature. Oh, and I spent all that money. Oh, well. It is going to hit our fire by two. We're down to seven. We'll give our dice a roll. Remember, our artificer is the one that has to rest. A six, three, and a two. Okay, not terrible. I'm actually really proud of our monk. Look at, we have a zero. Yay. <laughs> that felt so good. We finally rolled a 10. So for the artificer this time, let's, when we have to rest with the artificer, there's no option. We're going to flip and ready that dragon tooth spear. I think the first thing we're going to do is use our three here. And that will allow us to draw three items and we get to keep one. Look at these items, the Everlasting Blade. Once per watch phase, when resolving a direct attack, you can double one of the value of your dice. But this healing potion, choose an adventure, including yourself, refresh one of the ability cards. Or we have Activate, so that uses a die. And so the end of the round, reveal one more creature than the Campfire uh, Reveal level currently allows. Now, I'm, I'm definitely going the Health Potion. I'm going to put this one on top, followed by this one. For the other two dice, I actually think I'm just going to chop wood. One, two, three, four. We're all the way up to 11. I'm then going to spend the two bucks that we do have to give the strength potion over to the barbarian. Getting a 12 for the barbarian just seems awesome. Okay, we're going to refresh this. We know what that is. I have now refreshed all the money. And we're now going to draw eight total creature cards. We only have one more round after this. We just need to survive eight total creatures plus whatever we see on that final location. Let's do this. We'll flip our first enemy. Oh, of course. First position. Search the graveyard for the topmost summon card. Shuffle that card back into the creature deck. Let's see. Do I have... Let's see. Do I have a summon one? I don't know if I have one yet. I do not see one in the discard pile. Yes! Okay. Then we have the Forgotten Sentinel. Its health is increased by this location's player count, uh, or creature count, that's 8, so that is an 11 golem. Let's start with the monk simply taking out that undead acolyte with the 10 die. I love that we rolled a 10 there, that was awesome. Okay, we'll slide all of these down, and then let's reveal this one. We have the evil apparition. Evil apparition cannot be defeated with a single, uh, single die direct attack. Let's have our Barbarian do the Shocking Hammer with the four. 
Deal to the creature in first position the maximum value of the die spent here to activate this. That'd be 12. It only needed 11, so this guy's toast. We'll then slide them all down, and we have a reveal. Move the creature in first position to the end of the line and conceal it. That would normally be terrible, but with this guy, it's not. So I'm just going to move him to the end of the line and conceal it. We'll reveal the next one. Ooh, a drake. Uh, that's a first position effect. I don't really want that to go off, so I want to take that out. Nine health. The Artificer has that health potion. I think let's have fun with the Barbarian. Let's exhaust his ability, then take the first three cards in line, shuffle them together, and randomly place one back in the first position. It's a little risky with that Acid Drake, but I can potentially take out an Unhollowed that way. Let's grab the three cards here, give them a good shuffle so we don't know what they are. And then let's grab this one. We'll place this here. Oh, it's a Goblin Archer. It has a second position ability. That's awesome. So these two, I'll just put the Unhollowed on top with the Graveyard. Is this a beast? It is not. It's a first position effect for a Forest Sprite. I think then we'll just use the Monk, who can attack range, 5 damage, take out that Forest Sprite. Let's see what our next one is. The Goblin Hunter, ongoing. If a Goblin is a melee before or behind the Goblin Hurler, this is a Goblin, defeat that Goblin and exhaust one ability. So he basically takes this Archer and chucks it at us. That is amazing and terrible. I think I'm going to choose Bloodied on the Barbarian to exhaust. Let's hope it's not a Goblin behind him. Uh, we have to reveal this. Oh yeah, we knew it was in the Evil Apparition. So now we just need to take these out, and that should be easy. We need seven damage here. I've got seven, but I have to do it two dice. There's two. We've got a seven here, plus an eight, plus a six, plus a seven. <laughs> Those two are gone. All right, we're on to the final battle. Our final battle will take place here at the Tower Ruins. Now, no one goes to camp, so I'm assuming we just knock down our fire by two to nine. That's why I wanted to pump it up last time. The first time an adventurer exhausts all their ability cards, add a creature to the end of the line. We're looking at nine enemies, and then any of the horde, if we had anything in that horde, we'd add it to the end of this row. But uh, we've been pretty good at keeping the horde clear, so we're just going to have nine creature cards. It'll be really nice that we all get to fight together at least. Oh, we got a one, two sixes though. Look at this, a two, a six, and a seven, a one, a two, at least there's a nine. Here we go. This is the final battle. We've got a couple good rolls, some nines, some sixes, and some terrible twos, ones, and twos. We'll see how we can do. I do have a few tricks up my sleeve. I've got that spear all ready to go. I can cancel a reveal effect. I've got some strength. Yeah, and I've got this health potion that I can use. So I believe we have lots of options. Let's do this. We have eight cards here. The ninth one is off to the side. <laughs> Let's reveal our first two. Our first creature to show up is a summon, really, right now. We have to choose an adventure to immediately exhaust one of their ability cards. I don't love it, but our bounty hunter is the only one that is fully undamaged. We're going to flip over, track him down. We then get to replace summon with this guy. The uh, ongoing health for the Raging Inferno, which by the way, this is awesome, totally thematic, is equal to the health of your fire. So our fire is 9, 9 plus 5 is 14. Let's flip over our second one, and we have an Evil Apparition. I love these Evil Apparitions, they're really not that bad. What do you say we use a 1 here to defeat a revealed creature in the line whose type matches one of the trophy types that you have? Well, we have an Unhollowed. <laughs> That means this unhollowed is no more. That's what I'm talking about. Our next one, we have a dragon rider. Uh, reveal minus one for our fire. That does push us down to eight, but we're still at the two or more that are revealed. Now we do have to immediately reveal this one as well. And this is a goblin acolyte, which has a first position and end of line effect. So I definitely want to kill that before it gets to first position, but it is not a dragon. Neither of them are, so I don't have to worry about that. I have a six and a one here that I can use between our monk and our artificer to take out that dragon rider that will slide down the goblin acolyte. I then definitely want to take that acolyte out before it gets to first position. Our Artificer will use the Health Potion so that we can heal up this Rampage for our Barbarian, because then our Barbarian will use, well, let's see, first thing our Barbarian is going to do is use Strength. 
Choose an adventure on watch with at least one unspent die. Set that die value of that one to the highest it can be. So we're going to change this to the, how about I'm adding 10 to that? So it's a 12. <laughs> that is so much better. And we can use our hammer to make another one 12. I love it. Then let's use our leap. Exhaust his ability to defeat one creature in line. Then gain plus one range until the end of the round. So we now, all of us have range of two. And we're going to take out that goblin acolyte, no problem. We'll slide those cards down. Let's see, we have a trickster. I don't want to deal with that reveal. Thanks to that bounty hunter, we can use the Helm of Prophecy to cancel the reveal effect. We then can use the Dragon Tooth Spear, exhaust it, but we can defeat the enemy in second position, not even using any dice. Beautiful, our next one. Okay, we have a Goblin, oh, second position, stun and ability. Well, I really should have done this earlier, but I, you know, it's hard to keep track of everything playing with four heroes. I love it, but it is sometimes a challenge. We are going to stun Siphon Vortex. It seems somewhat annoying. Remember how I said the evil apparition was not a problem? <laughs> well, we have to use two direct damage, one from the Barbarian and one from the Bounty Hunter. And I'll go ahead and keep this as a trophy for our Bounty Hunter to take that undead out. Let's see what our next one is. Reveal minus one to our fire, and we do not want him in first position. We still can have two enemies revealed, but not for long. If I lose any more fire, that won't be the case. That wyvern, though, has no chance with a bounty hunter that has a seven, exactly what we need to take that out. Okay, we literally have three more creatures left to win the game. And we have another summon card. That is terrible. Let's go ahead and have someone take a damage. Let's have that artificer take a damage. We'll flip this one over. And we will replace this summon with a hulking amaglam. Ongoing, each time a reveal effect is resolved, resolve it an additional time as if it had been triggered by the Hawking Anaglim. Oh my gosh, that is an unhallowed. The nice thing is it only has nine health and we have our monk here. He can use his nine to take that out, no problem. I love having the monk having extra range. That means two more enemies. Uh, we have, oh, this is easy. Uh, I think we just won the game. We have a 12 here from the Barbarian, and we've got a 7 here plus a 2 plus a 6. Okay, it was a little touchy and goy, but uh, once we were okay with whatever that summons brought out, I think, yeah, I mean, we, we handled that one. There you have it. That was Set a Watch, Swords of the Coin. Uh, yeah, I definitely think it's an upgrade from the base game. The only thing is, is, and I don't know if it's just these enemies, I did feel like that was essentially a walk in the park. Let me know if I missed something, and maybe that's the reason why. Uh, but I, I felt like when I played the... I, you know, I played the base game against the um, enemies that came with this, and I felt like that was much more of a challenge, actually. So I don't know if I just got lucky with how cards were being revealed. Uh, but overall, still super fun. I do really love the puzzle. The biggest thing about this game is I just feel like it overstays its welcome for maybe about four rounds. <laughs> I think, I, I, I really feel like the game could have been each of you has to rest once and then a final battle. Having to do that twice and then a final, nine rounds can get long. I mean, this video is going to be long. Uh, I, I think it's fun, but I feel like after round you know seven or eight, I, I'm ready to be done. So uh, if, though, you are involved and invested in that dice placement game and puzzle and you're really enjoying it, you, you know, it can go pretty quick. But overall, I would say I still really enjoy it. Just be ready for it to be a little bit of a longer experience. Thank you so much for watching, as always, and I'll make sure to catch you at the next stop.